going on, everyone? Welcome to another edition of the Student Fire Podcast, live from the Speak Fire Studio. My name is Bobby Berg. I'm a motivational speaker for schools, and I'm here to help you live your best life today. To welcome Bobby Berg to Voice on Fire. Thank you, anybody who takes the time to tune in to watch and listen. Um, I would love to introduce you to Bobby Berg. Now, Bobby's out of Alaska, so Anchorage, Alaska. And Bobby's the first person that I'm interviewing in the Voice on Fire series. Now, for those of you who may not be familiar with what I'm doing, this is an opportunity for me to share the messages of other people who are making a difference somewhere globally. So in this case, Bobby's out of uh, Alaska. Uh, Anybody that I interview could be anywhere in the world. So that's what's so exciting about this. Um, change makers, difference makers, and life influencers, people that are out there creating, founding, curating, and making the, the, the world a better place. And Bob is actually involved in a really interesting area to do with um, the students of the world. Now, I'd love to share with you more about that, and I'm going to throw it over to Bobby. Bobby, tell the world a little bit more about what you're doing. So currently, I'm based out of Anchorage, Alaska. Um, I'm currently focusing on talking to students in the inner city. So mainly in really impoverished areas, um, school systems where their materials aren't really quite up to date. There aren't enough staff members to really give students the individualized attention that they need. Cause I remember growing up, I always found it. I grew up in a great, wonderful school district. I mean, one of the top 10 in the state that I was living in couldn't have asked for more, but some of my friends didn't. And I always, we would always compare notes like, hey, here's what we're doing. And they'd always go, you have the materials for that? Wow. Wow. And it it just, it always shocked me. I was like, wow, I never, I never noticed that that would make such a difference. And what I've been finding as I've grown up and I've gotten older is that the students in the inner city over, oftentimes get overlooked completely and not just by their parents or the school district, but by politicians, by everyone, because we just, it's not something that if you're not in it, most people think about. So for the 2019-2020 school year, I made it a mission of mine to impact a thousand students in a positive manner academically. And that's really been where the focus of my entire professional speaking has gone for this year. And this coronavirus has kind of put a halt on some of that, but we're working around it pretty well. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we can't. We, we almost can't have this conversation without mentioning good old COVID-19. It's just mm-hmm. been such a wake-up call to the entire world. And, you know, here I am in Melbourne, Australia, and there you are in Anchorage, Alaska, and we're both talking about the same thing because it really doesn't matter where you are in the world. It's having an impact. And mm-hmm. I think that's partly what drove me to want to create an opportunity to speak with people anywhere around the world about the missions that they have because we're entering into a new age and I think we're all learning that we need to be a lot more compassionate and connected with our fellow human beings Uh, and so this is what my mission is driven by is to have massive global impact and that means that let's be connected now you you're you're speaking about the the students if i understand that are in your immediate district or within the city regions that you have access to is there any likelihood that you would take something like what you're doing to a global platform or to anywhere around the world where you feel that that could have impact absolutely 100 percent um I've been, so recently I gave a talk out in North Royalton, Ohio, which is the district that I went to school in growing up. Um, But I'm very much willing to travel wherever an opportunity comes because it's not just in my local area. It's, it's everywhere. You know, you look at Seattle and there are hundreds of schools, not hundreds, there are hundreds of, hundreds of students in various school districts that need help. If you look at Arizona, if you look at Texas, if you look at Florida, it's not, it not, not even just here in the U.S. It, this is a global issue. And the thing that, that really gets me is a lot of people look at these students as though they're not, they're not smart. Mm-hmm. That they're in the situation they're in because their parents put them there or because of some outside factor, which could be true. But these students are oftentimes wildly intelligent. 
I mean, I, I'm a firm believer that there's no one in the world that's not intelligent in some way, shape, or form. It just might not be in the traditional sense. Mm -hmm. And so to really help hit that global aspect, I run a podcast called the Student Fire Podcast, and it's fire with a Y because my buddies and I just thought about it and we're like, this would be really cool. But I have listeners from all around the world. There are listeners in Australia, there are listeners from Russia, there are listeners from Germany, wow. and I never in my wildest dreams would have thought that this would happen. Hmm. Um, my buddy, Mike Jingras and Aisha Thomas and Sean Brassfield just got together and they're like, Hey, we should do this. Mm -hmm. And instead of having just one podcast with four people, they said, wait a second, why don't we all brand ourselves as, as this thing called speak fire, where we're going to speak fire into these people. And based off of that brand, we're all going to have our individual podcasts hitting different markets or different, different, areas. Mm -hmm. So I talk to students, my buddy Sean talks to uh, young men, my buddy Aisha talks to um, predominantly women about dealing with internal issues. And my buddy Mike talks to business leadership. So whenever someone comes over to a website, they can go, oh, wow, I can get all of this value out of just these free podcasts. This is crazy. And mm -hmm. they're short, they're digestible. I think my episodes are generally five to 20 minutes because long podcasts are great. But I often find that I can't listen to an entire podcast for an hour. It's just, mm -hmm. it's too much time. Mm -hmm. So the idea was to shorten these down and make them easily digestible for people. So you can listen to it on the go. Mm -hmm. That is amazing. And I really love the um, collective uh, input where the four of you are working together. And obviously with my brand associated with fire, which is such a powerful image. Um, I love the alignment that we had there and, uh, for me, Voice on Fire, in, in the same sort of sense, is about allowing people to show the passion that drives them and the, the passion and the fire in the belly because it's all about one person can make a difference. And I find that we're so lucky that we are in the current world uh, that we're in, meaning the technology is available for us to have global impact and mm -hmm. now more than ever, given that the um, uh, coronavirus has caused for a lot of us to be quite restricted within our home environments, we're so dependent upon the technology to help us have that impact. What I'm really fascinated by with what you're, you're mentioning is that regards to, obviously, as you say, intelligence comes in all forms. And it's not always the traditional, you know, school education form of intelligence. And we do know that there's ma many different types of intelligence, emotional intelligence and, you know, that sort of thing. What I'm fascinated to learn from you is what do you, what's the impact you are seeing on those students that you have spoken to um, when they've not had access to the resources? What are you seeing? What, what's the emotional or the social impact? Is there kind of like a before and an after or a way that you can describe what you see as a consequence of them not having access to resources? So something I did, there was a school in Georgia that I got asked to uh, come speak at. It was, a, it was supposed to be a PTA meeting, which wound up becoming one classroom, which after I offered, I said, listen, this is a very small school district of no more than a thousand people uh, district wide. I said, listen, it's a free event. I am more than willing to talk to as many people as you'd like. Why don't you invite the whole school district and see what happens? And it was on a Friday night, which wasn't ideal, but I was shocked that over 400 people showed up. Wow. Um, they don't have speakers come out to this district ever. I was the first speaker they that generation of kids had ever seen and from the uh what the school district had said is they're like well last speaker we had came in i think four years ago and they charged i think it was around six thousand dollars for a half hour presentation which sure if if they bring that amount of value yeah. cool yeah. that's their fee go for it but i guess i not to speak ill of any other speaker but the event did not go well for them so the district kind of said we're, we're not bringing this in so i offered let's do this um, the talk was supposed to be a half hour long. It wound up being two hours, which was an hour of me speaking and then an hour Q and a session. Wow. And I start every talk off the exact same way. I'll walk up and get a, get a feed, a feel for the room, either with 
an inf usually with students that it's an informal survey of, you know, how are you feeling? How are things at home? How, do you feel good or bad today? It, depending on the grades, I'll change the, how I phrase it, but it's mm -hmm. something along those lines. Mm -hmm. And then at the end of the talk, I'll give them the exact same thing and have them fill it out again. And the results are drastically different. Um, the talk that I gave in Georgia, I said, I did it verbally. And I said, all right, let's get a show of hands. Who's, you know, who's feeling good today? And I got probably six. I said, who's feeling really stressed? I got about 20. And I said, who feels like the weight of the world is really just on your shoulders and you can't shake it. And every hand in the room went up and I said, oh, okay. Wow. Okay. And then at which, was weird because I pivoted from my, I was going to talk about bullying. I was going to talk about um, really coming together as, as a community. And although I did touch on those points, I started talking about how it's okay to talk about your feelings. And wow. by the end of the talk, I said, okay, who's really feeling hopeful right now? Every hand went up. I said, okay, who's feeling a little down still? And there were still some hands, but I said, see, you list, you paid attention during the whole talk. Because it wasn't just, oh, he said something inspiring, cool. I'm going to put my hand up for the positive stuff. It was, I'm, I know, I'm aware that I'm still feeling not great, but I can accept that. I'm going to raise my hand, which was the whole point. Mm -hmm. And it's, for a lot of kids in the inner city, they don't talk about their feelings. You're seen as weak if you say you're not feeling good. You're seen as less than if you're saying I'm feeling anxious or I'm feeling depressed. You have to act hard. You have to act, you have to act tough all the time. And that's not good for anybody. Oh so I really make it a point with these students to let them know, hey, you, ha you have to feel how you feel. It's okay. Like this culture that you're living in is not the real world. It's your current world, but it is not how the rest of the world is. And for a lot of them, I get countless texts and emails and DMs on Instagram and um reviews on my podcast where they'll say, Hey, you came and spoke to my school. And I, I just, I want to say thank you because I didn't know it was okay. You're the first person in years to tell me, Hey, my feelings are valid. And that starts the conversation. Yeah. And I found that to be, that's, that's been the most rewarding thing of doing this completely. Absolutely. Wow. That is amazing, Bobby. I'm, I'm, I'm so impressed. I found myself just, just nodding along and, and shaking my head and feeling the pain that I know comes from feeling firstly that you're not heard, that you're not allowed to say how you really feel for fear of, you know, some sort of recrimination verbally from somebody who probably will end up bullying you. And even the silent bullying, which is not the words or the actions, but being ignored and purposefully being ignored as a form of bullying. I've experienced that myself as a young person growing up and even in the adult world, it can get pretty ugly. And I find the most important, important thing that a lot of people say to me and that I've learned is we need to feel heard and validated. And you've, you've echoed that. So, you know, I, I'm interested to hear what it is that you do as a, as a form of a follow-up with any of the students. Do you find that you have any sort of, steps in place to help any of the students that may reach out to contact you or do you have a, a, a you know um, a way of guiding them towards getting those resources that they need what's what's your action there so oftentimes I will first send them right to my podcast and say hey I don't know if you like listening to podcasts but you seem to like listening to me talk if you found value in it I have hours of content that you can check out to get a little bit more uh, narrowed information specific, not for you, but for what issue you might be going through. Check out my podcast. Um, recently, I, my, one of my speaking coaches suggested that I start coaching. Mm -hmm. um, I used to be a band director. I've coached multiple sports, be it track, um, mixed martial arts, jujitsu. I, I love coaching. Mm -hmm. and I just never thought to put two and two together. I'm like, well, mm -hmm. okay, might as well. And um, one, of my, one of the students that I spoke to recently reached out to me and she said, hey, I really loved your talk. I, you really, it really echoed and resonated with me. I would love to work with you. And I said, okay, I can't promise you're going to like this because I'm going to ask you to do some things that are, they're hard. And the student's in fifth grade and 
I'm asking her to do things that adults have trouble doing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cause I don't do this, the typical, Oh, how are you doing? Oh, great. Oh, cool. Let, no, no, no. Like when I ask somebody, how are you doing? I know in American culture, we do this a lot where a typical conversation starter is, Oh, how are you doing? And in America, we, we like genuinely want to know how you're doing just to hold conversation. In Germany, that's a very odd thing because you don't get that personal for no reason. Mm -hmm. And with this student, I was like, no, if I ask you how you're doing, I want an honest answer. I want to know if you're not doing well. Because if I have plans of we're going to do all these high energy things, yet your energy stores are at empty, we're going we're gonna to butt heads on this. And I don't, that, does, that wastes both of our time. Mm -hmm. And I found it's been so rewarding getting to coach because they don't, they need that guidance. And I remember growing up, I needed that guidance. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wait a second, just, just be there. So I, I've, oh, I've recently opened my coaching to students. Um, it's, it's been odd because some of the parents are uncomfortable with it. Um, not because it's, I, I mean, because I'm a complete stranger to them, which is completely understandable, mm -hmm. but it's more so because they don't know how to pay me. Mm -hmm. um, I've had multiple parents say, Hey, I would love, to, I would love for my student to work with you, but I, I, ca I can't offer, I can't cover your speaking fee. I'm like, wait, 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 wait. Did I ask if you had money or did I ask if I could help your student? There's a difference here. If I was asking you for money, I would have straight up said, Hey, here's my fee. It's mm -hmm. not what I asked. It's like when your friend says, Hey, do you want to go get dinner with me? And you say, Oh, I don't have money. That's, that's not what they asked. Mm -hmm. They asked you if you wanted to get dinner with them. That's completely different. Mm -hmm. It's, and I find that's a big issue that's happening. Now, granted, I very much think people should get paid for their services where payment is due. Sure. But especially with this global pandemic going around, how different would the world be if we stopped worrying about how big your wallet's getting and we started focusing a little bit more on how, how full does your heart feel? Mm -hmm. How full and satisfied do you feel as a person, Right. So I've currently opened my coaching up for free for any student that wants it. That's anyone that's like, Hey, I really, and this is ranging from, you know, middle schoolers all the way up to graduate students. I don't care. I've had multiple people that are like, Oh, I, I really need some guidance here. I'm like, cool. Let's, let's, let's work together. If you need that personalized one-on-one -on -one attention, let's do it. I'm not worried about getting paid for this, that we can worry about that later. Mm. Paychecks are going to come and go. You feeling better. Process. that we don't know how much time we have on that one mm -hmm. right yeah 100 percent. that is yeah. i so hear what you're saying <laughs> and that whole experience of you know checking in with people to start with and and getting that that sense of is someone really okay like we we in australia have a tendency to say and i'll and i'll i'll give you the best aussie accent that i've got it's like oh hey gal mate and it's like we don't really, and a lot of, and I, and I speak warmly of my fellow Australian counterparts who are, you know, I, I love being Australian, but there are times when I find that we can put on that she'll be right mate attitude, and it's not. Mm -hmm. And unless we are okay saying, you know what, I'm really not okay, how are we ever going to? accept that sometimes the heart is not full the heart is not okay the the center of ourselves is not feeling like how we think the outside world thinks it is and mm -hmm. there's a disconnect you know we we have this intensity of our own emotions but unless we get some sort of feedback from the outside world that says, hey, yeah, I have those feelings too. We don't know that our feelings are normal unless we get some sort of validation from the external source. The demons that run around inside of our heads will convince us of all sorts of things about our self-worth and our, and our worthiness to even have those feelings. So it's really important. And as I, I love how you were talking earlier about... Um, about giving you know someone that's at such an early age these really tough challenges that adults might not want to take on and it's really important for us to recognize that a lot of the time the adults won't take them on because back then when they were young people there wasn't that validation they weren't heard and so they've suppressed everything so much 
that the idea of taking on a challenge that peels away some of that BS layering that's there is just overwhelming. And like you, I'm very much in terms of the coaching that I do, I'm very much about there's no fluffy pink unicorns in my world. It's all about tough love. There's no sugar coating. There's no BS about this. You're too valuable to do fluffy pink unicorns. We'll get those fluffy pink unicorns at the end, but you've got to go through the tough love first. And it's all about making someone realise that if I value you that much as the person who wants to guide you, then isn't it fair that you should value yourself that much as well? And I think that is something that you and I have perhaps some parallels going on there. And I, I'm interested you mentioned some very amazing things that you've been doing. And I wonder, have you, have you seen a difference in terms of your particular school area? Has there been any sort of measurable change that shows that when those various emotional resources are available, grades improve? Is there any sort of work you've done there or is that something that's ahead of you? Um, so that's very much ahead of me, but it's also... Ooh, that was another awesome episode of the Student Fire podcast. Thank you all for sticking around for this long, but I got a question for you. Have you ever thought about starting your own podcast? See, when I was trying to get this podcast off the ground, I had a lot of questions like, how do I record an episode? How do I get my show to apps? Like, do I have to do it individually or can I just have one place that does everything for me? And most importantly, how do I make money from my podcast? Is that even an option? Well, honestly, y'all, your answer is Anchor. Anchor is the one-stop shop for recording, hosting, and distributing your podcast. Best of all, it is 100% free and ridiculously easy to use. And now, Anchor can match you with great sponsors that want to advertise on your podcast. Yes, you. That means you can get paid to make the podcast. You can get paid to podcast the right way. In fact, that's exactly what I'm doing right now by reading this ad. If you want to get down on this, if you want to make your podcast a reality and you want your success and your word to be a thing, man, you already know. Hop over to Anchor and give it a start. You won't regret it. Catch y'all in the next episode. Peace. I got you. It's coming. Are you ready to ignite the fire? We are Speak Fire. Oh, and by the way, that's fire with a Y. What's going on, everyone? Internal fire. Student fire. Young fire. Father's fire. Leadership fire. Champion fire. (laughs) (laughs) Unlocking the fire within. Thank you all for tuning in. Let's grow. Speak fire. SpeakFire.com. Speak Fire with a Y. We have a new episode that comes out every Monday at 4 a.m. Are you going to be up with us? Deuces. I am excited to bring you my new book, Trendsetter, Seven Steps to Radically Stand Out to Be the Best You. This book details my journey of coming to the United States and being excited to embrace the American culture. But unfortunately, my culture was not accepted and I found myself being bullied as a young girl. And in this process, I decided that I wanted to disconnect from my culture to be more accepted into American culture. And through that process, I got so depressed from trying to fit in that I attempted suicide my freshman year in high school. So this book talks about the journey of what I did to become radically transformed, to be the strong woman I am today. This book is something that's really going to enable the reader to understand and embrace who they are, embrace what makes them special, and become radically transformed. Get your copy today at becomingatrendsetter.com. Again, that is becomingatrendsetter.com. Or check it out at my website at AishaThomas.org.